So now I want to talk about the interaction of phytocannabinoids with the endocannabinoid system. And I want to give some more plants that actually have phytocannabinoids. We think about cannabis sativa. It is the plant with the most of them, right? It has the majority of them. That's its major uh, molecules in that plant. But we also have echinacea. So echinacea is actually in the same family as cannabis, um, just like hops is. They're both in the same family, um, botanically. So echinacea, what they're finding, that it works with CB2 receptors, and it's one of the reasons why echinacea works for us when we're sick or not to get sick, because it's actually stimulating CB2 receptors. So on the biochemical side, echinacea is a, has phytocannabinoids. Also, there's a, uh, something called electric daisy, um, which also has cannabinoids. That's also called the toothache plant. Uh, in Western herbo herbology. It stimulates CB2 receptors, the molecules in this plant. Then we have, this is actually, we've, we've experimented with this one in our company quite a bit with essential oils. It's called helichrysanthemum. It's, it's in the um, chrysanthemum family. It's an African version of this, which is, um, has CB, CBG in it. So CBG is a cannabinoid like CBD or THC, and it's actually the cannabinoid that becomes all the other cannabinoids. So it's the mother cannabinoid. Um, today in the plant, for example, in these plants, in particularly cannabis, we really find a high concentration of THC and CBD. All the other minor cannabinoids like CBG are very, very le less, like 1% or 2% or 0.1%. But what's happening is now people through, you know, breeding the plants are starting to breed up these other cannabinoids. So we're just starting to get access to CBG, for example, which has another therapeutic effect in the body. So there's a lot going on there, but um, this helichrysanthemum has CBG in it. Um, then we have liverwort, has CB, it works with CB1 receptors. Um, another one is black pepper. Black pepper has a terpene in it, which we'll talk in a second, which works with CB2 receptors um, in the body. So things like, the, things that have high in black pepper are cloves, for example, are high in black pepper. So that's one you can use also. Black truffles work with CB1 receptors. We have Chinese rhododendron. Um, it has a, fo a folic acid in it that works with the CB1 and CB2 receptors. So this is an acid form that actually works with the endocannabinoid system. Then we have kava kava, which is working with CB1. This is part of the reason why it's used to relax us, right? Because it's working with CB1, which are highly concentrated in the brain. Um, the last one is chocolate, believe it or not, has, works with the endocannabinoid system, but it works with the enzyme FA that we mentioned before, which is the enzyme that breaks down anandamide and 2-AG. So by taking chocolate, it's actually working with the enzymes that breaks it down so it, it allows more of our endocannabinoids to be in our system. So it's working through our actually proper endocannabinoids, like anandamide, for example. So that's where chocolate comes in. So those are just 10 of them. There's, there's more, but these are the main ones we find. And so now we can explore with these. We can add these to cannabis. We can add these together to create some pretty interesting effects on patients and to create balance. On this side, as you can see, um, the phytocannabinoids come in. They work in key and lock on uh, anandamide and 2-AG. They just lock right in just like our endocannabinoids. So it's the molecules look exactly the same, but they're coming from the plant. So those are the phytocannabinoids.